Guys, I regret to inform you that a living legend on our farm is gone. Well, I messed up. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farm. Today, Tuesday, just after we got an inch of rain yesterday, we're moving corn today. First off, Seamus plug, Ariat shoes, link in the description. They are awesome. Just took them off though because it's really muddy. And if it's muddy out, I'm gonna wear my old boots. But those things are awesome work shoes. I wear them when it's not muddy out. Nathan's up there switching the leg. Because we are all full up here, so we're transferring corn. And I'm gonna start hopping in rotation and see what we get done. So we're using our wagon and semi to move grain. Wagon because it's really easy. Semi because we don't have two wagons. I mean, it makes sense. So we're going out the side discharge of our bin. It's the only, but we have three main dry bins here. We have a 38,000 bushel, 40,000 bushel, and 42,000 bushel. Those of you guys that don't know, a bushel of corn is about a five gallon bucket worth. So yeah, we have a lot of corn. So let's go ahead and uh, hop in there and move this wagon ahead. Oh, Nathan fills me. Filling. So this is the only bin that has a side discharge. It's our newest, and any bin we build from now on that's at the dryer, it's gonna have a side discharge because it's so easy to basically just like gravity unload your grain as opposed to augering it upward. Anytime you run it through an auger, it damages the grain. Ryan just took off the wagon. Uh, we're gonna fill the semi up. We got a 10,000 bushel bin over next door that we're gonna fill up. So that's what we're doing. They've already gotten two semis and two wagon loads. It's about 3,200 bushel right there. Maybe a little more. Keep filling her up. All it is, just a gate. Slides down via gravity. So I just got loaded up. We're gonna take this thing over next door. So it sounds like it's kind of a complicated way of doing this. So Pat's actually just helping unload on that side. Nathan's gonna help load and Brian and I are gonna run, gonna drive in between. So let's drive over there. And in the meantime, I'm not sure what Nathan's gonna do. Just change the tires on the skid loader. This semi is unloaded. Pat's just closing it up. And then as I back up, he'll move the swing away auger out of the way. And then we'll get going. And now we rinse and repeat. Nathan's gonna control the chute. The only bad thing about this is you need two people to do this side chute. It's really hard and inefficient and hard on the person doing it if they have to move the truck, climb up there, fill it up till it's full, climb down, move the truck. It'd be much better if we had a camera system like Nick Welker does and just had an electric motor up there. But honestly, that's a little complex. I don't think we wanna put a camera system on our semis. It would be the most efficient for sure, but yeah, that is what it is. It's really not too bad. So we're just moving corn, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll probably move corn. We'll fill that bin for sure, probably in the next hour. And then we'll uh, either move to the next bin or we will let the dryer run and then go fill it up, get that wet bin down almost empty and then fill it up later tonight. It's getting hot in here because there is no AC. I am getting so hot. Ooh, he's got her full. Moving corn. Got a half inch of rain yesterday, six tenths, something like that. So not a lot of guys are picking corn yet, but some guys are just starting to on my way up here about an hour ago. Probably saw four guys just starting. But we'll hopefully start here in the next three to four hours. Run a little bit, maybe run five, six thousand bushel through. Another one down. So in that last half hour, Brian and I moved to 1,600 bushel, probably close to 17. Sweet, so we'll move this corn quick. Got new slicks on her. Factory ones lasted about 700 hours, just under 700. The old skid don't look too bad for that many hours. A few dings here and there, but overall, it looks pretty good. Good to go for another thousand, hopefully. Down, down, down. Another load in the bin. Let's go get filled up again. Oh, oh! Unloading the semi. Going into this big 13 inch auger. Into that bin that we normally put beans in, but this year we're putting corn. We're gonna save that wet bin for beans, or our old wet bin. Mainly because it'll be easier uh, for beans. A, put them in the bin if they're too wet. And B, just to use the truck dump. I'll show you guys in a couple of videos on when they do that. It's actually a pretty slick system. This is load number three, semi load number five. We put five wagon loads in the bin right now and then four, this is number five. 
So five times 1100 is 5,500. Five times six is 3,000. So 8,500 is what we got in there so far. It's about a 12,000 bushel bin. I lied earlier. So we got another, after this one, we got another probably two more each to go ish, something like that. Guys get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm sweating my butt off, moving corn, and opening up space for our uh, dryer to dry in. So I'll see you guys when we're doing something cool. See ya. Man, look how green these beans are. These last load. Moving the auger to that bin right there. It's gonna be interesting because usually we fill this bin when this bean field's harvested, or this field here is harvested, but we're not right now. But we're still gonna try and move corn because we need to move corn. So. That's what it is. That 5088 is really doing work. <laughs> About all it does now is just run this big Mayrath auger. In the auger set. Now we're unloading this truck. First truck in that bin. We did not think we would get it in here because it is tight. So I'm recording this on my phone. So I'll show you guys when I get the GoPro back. There you go, there's corn falling in their bin. Guys, I regret to inform you that a living legend on our farm is gone. I'm staring at its old place that it used to reside. It's sad. Any guesses on what's gone? That's where it used to be. Sad day on the farm. Sad but a happy day. I'll explain later. But any guesses down below what we, uh, what we lost? Well, we got the first bin finished as you guys saw. But we decided to step to the second one and we're gonna fill that one tonight. So probably no combining today. We actually are just running out of our uh, chute, side chute. We got to set up an auger here soon. What I mean by that is the side chute runs off of gravity. Bins like this, if your side chute's right here, you can only fill this triangle. The other trapezoid doesn't, uh, just won't work because gravity isn't there. So we're gonna have to set up an auger here soon. Is that a trapezoid or a rhombus? Either way, I outdone myself and I'm suppressed I remember that. So here we are drying very, very, very slowly. So you can kind of see coming in at 26%. We got to dry it down to, we like to have it a little bit drier than I would have liked personally. I like to see it dry to 15, but we get a 14. So we're drying 12 points. And when we're doing that, we're only wanting that 20% capacity. So basically we're running 210 bushels an hour with this thing. That's just how slow it is drying wet corn. We just had that wet of corn when we were running at Long's, our long farm. Car to that video right here, right there. That's hard to see in the mirror, but we were in dry out of the uh, dump that you can kind of see. Imagine, see that side dump? There's the only angle that we could get grain just because of gravity, it flows down this way. So all this stuff right here, we couldn't get. So it ran dry, so we had to move to the auger. That's what we're doing. This is load number three for Brian. I just did my load number three. My grandma, bless her heart, almost 89, going around picking up weeds at the neighbors. Oh, she's a trooper with her cane and everything. I hope when I'm even in 79, I can be half as spry as her. She is just one tough woman. Man, I love her. So we got probably four more loads to go. We'll see if we can get her done before dark. Man, it's getting dark on me already. That's better. Well, let's go ahead and uh, reveal what happened. So we ended up selling a very nice piece of equipment that we've had for a long time, actually. It was our bull rack, our cattle pot, whatever you want to call it. And the reason I'm kind of watching over here is because we're still getting loaded. Oh yeah, quick side note. We uh, decided, like I said, to switch bins and we're going to finish both those bins up. So we're gonna move 25,000 bushels of grain, which is pretty good day for us, that's for sure. But anyway, so we sold our bull rack. We sold it to a guy out of South Dakota. He bought it for a very fair price, and we, like I said, we didn't short him, he didn't short us, it was a good deal. So we, uh, like I said, sold our bull racks. We're gonna have to find something new for Harvard, or for uh, this fall. So we sold our bull racks, that means we're gonna have to find something for this fall. Not sure what we're gonna do, we can have a couple ideas, but we're hoping we get a similar size. That was a 50 foot uh, tandem axle. We're hoping we find like another 50 foot Merit uh, spread axle this time though. So that's what we're hoping, we'll see what happens, but we're gonna have to do something here in the next month, that's for sure, because usually we start selling cattle around that like 15th of November-ish, something like that. But 
yeah, so that's the, that's the new news. Man, we need some lights in these yards, guys. It'd be nice to have one right there. Another big one up here. For vlogging purposes, right? Lights are on now because it's getting dark. Well, I messed up. I really messed up. So uh, I closed the door, but I didn't lock it. First time I've ever done that. I'm gonna drive over, it worked itself loose. Started putting corn on it, and eventually this worked itself loose, so it creeped, uh, trickled, uh, it was coming out. Luckily I caught it when I did, but yep, that's my fault. Crap. So Curtis is gonna take over for me. I'm gonna help Nathan fill up, and then I'm gonna grab me some Gino's pizza and head home. Loading. I am gonna head out, ladies, gents, and germs. It was a fun day of moving corn. And by fun, I mean not so fun, but it's gotta be done for what we currently have for our setup. Eventually, we're gonna put, hopefully, a 100,000 bushel bin to the north and maybe even two. Who knows, but that's, uh, for now, we just gotta do what we gotta do. We, we, we have bins that we own. It's $10,000, 10,000 times, let's say we get 50 cents for the carryover. It's quite a bit of money. That's five grand right there just for moving corn, so. We're gonna do it and it's gonna be what it is, but I'm gonna get me a water, go home and get, or go to Gino's, get some pizza and call it nights. Whoa, whoa, whoa guys, hold on, don't click away. My dad wanted to show you guys the last day we had weaning your cattle, so let's jump to that. Such a beautiful sight. <clears throat> the mighty Mississippi, lock of dam number 12. Well, good morning everyone. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. Today is Friday, October 15th. I got my right hand dog with me. We have day two of weaning cows in Bellevue, Iowa. I am going to head out there and get them all rounded up and then we're going to bring the cow trailers up and I'm hoping we move the cows up to the pond pasture and take the calves down to the vet, get them worked and then we will take them to the Preston farm. I did go out last night as you saw, uh, get them all brought in, it took probably about a half hour to bring them in. But I did get everything all accounted for last night. I hope everybody's safe. Hey, we made it out here to the farm. I got five buckets loaded up, a couple fence posts I want to put in for support. I can hear the cows over there looking for their calves. Not too bad though, but they're hear them bellowing a little bit. There's no cows, nothing around. Bad for Bud, so now he's got to go either there, there, or there, or there to look for them. So we gotta go see if we can find some cows, get them rounded up. It took me a little while to uh, find these little buggers, but I got the last two calves that I was missing. They were way up on that far point. We should have everything down here. We'll get them locked up. Pat just called me and said he's on his way up with the trailer. Hopefully it goes good. We gotta sort them out. We sort the calves to the front of it and then the cows to the back. It took a little bit longer than I thought I would do to get them rounded up. Here they come, they're running. They know there's a tree. Oh, yeah. Into the crack. Here we go. I miss. We got them in here. I think that's going to be the easy part of this task. So now we got to get the calves up into this pen. That could be interesting. It took me a little while, but I have cows on this side, calves on this side. Trailer's coming in. Uh, some unhappy cows here in a little bit, aren't you, huh? A little bit of rain. Guess it don't hurt nobody, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yesterday is a good, happy, sad day for the bud man. Uh, the calves. But it's a lot better because you got to wean them to get them. The moms, like I said, the only moms should be pregnant. Uh, we got the trailer back down in here. Uh, you guys are mad. Come on, yeah, get out of here. Uh, yeah, I know. You'll be bellying for a couple days. Come on, come on. Okay, the calves are gone. So now we're gonna get the cows. We're we'll actually stick them up in the yard. We got Brian that doesn't like this camera coming down with the trailer. We'll get these cows loaded up and get them home for a week. Get them out in the pond pasture here in about a week. Just in the yard here, just checking gates to make sure everything's shut up. Uh, we're gonna put, like I said, we're gonna put the cows in here for three, four days so they can clean this up. So that way they get this all cleaned up. So I won't have to feed them today. Just gotta make sure everything's locked up. The little buggers I wanna get out. So check the water quick. This corn's gotta be 10 feet tall. We're heading back down to where Nathan's at with the other cows. So I think we took eight up, so there should be seven left. Brian's backing up behind me, the trailer. This is how I keep my girlish figure. 
But yeah, the corn looks nice. Nice and tall, standing good the way it looks. I'm kind of excited to get up here and start picking some of this stuff, see what it's going to be like. We are on our way down to get these cows out of here. All the calves are going in Bellevue. They're down at Pat's place right now. Well, actually, the 14 are probably still at the vets. But once they get down at the vet, they'll take them down where the 32 went yesterday, down the yard at Pat's. Sometime in the near future, we will have to separate them because we always put the, the bull calves in one yard and the heifer calves in another yard to keep them separate. I think we got a fisherman down here, Scott County. So we got seven left. We'll load these bad girls up. Actually, they're good girls. Get them up there with the rest of them, just like they're trained to do. All the cows are loaded up in the trailer. They'll dump them off up with the rest of them. I'll take the side by side up. Bring the tractor down, we'll tear all this down, take it back up, put it away, and then we will uh, take that electric fence down that's up top of that hill. So we'll see what happens. Thank you guys so much for indulging my dad. Here's round to the outro. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know the rest. Facebook, Instagram, Hearts on Friendly Farms. Of course, guys, as always, take care, take it easy, stay safe. Ta-ta for now. Ouch, it gets dark too early. Cows!